Hey everyone, welcome to Encore. Here's part two of Color Theory. Okay, so the next thing we're going to discuss are the different tones and shades. Now, tint is a term we use when you add white to a color. So if you add white to a color, you're tinting. And what happens if we add white to red? We get this color, pink. Okay? Now when you're shading, shading means you're adding black. So you're darkening the color. So what you're going to get if you add black to a red color, you're going to get a crimson color, which is like this one. Now, the middle color right here is tone. All right, and tone is basically adding gray. Now, what's gray? Gray is basically black and white together. Okay, so you have a tint, which is adding white. Tone, which is adding gray. And you have shade, which is adding black. So, any of these colors are hues of red. Okay, so when you say, oh, it's a shade of red, it's really not a shade of red unless it's darker than red. So if it's lighter than red, then it's a tint of red. So it's kind of complicated that way, but I don't want to get too technical. <laughs> so anyway, so all the hues of red are basically pinks or kind of like that salmon color or a ruddy color or crimson. You know, like a dark red, burgundy maroon, you know, that deep red color wines. Um, so that's basically, you know, different variations or different hues of red. Okay, so here's an example of a chromatic arrangement of the red tones. So you basically get the tints, which are the light pinks right here. And then as it get darker, you get the shades. So you get the darker reddish pinks right here. So that's how you can explain this in a chromatic arranging of the colors. Now, to show you the same thing in blue, I'll show you one of my blue palettes. Again, it's chromatically arranged from the light colors to the dark colors. Okay? And my greens are pretty much the same way. So you get the light greens right here, which are the tints of greens, and then the shades of green are the darker ones, which is right here. See, aside from um, the direct complementary color that's going to make it bright and vivid, you also get the monochromatic colors. So basically, monochromatic is just the same color, but um, just different tints, tones, or shades of that same color. So for this example, I'm going to show you green. So green, you get the mint green, which is a lighter color, again, a tint. You add white, you get minty green. And then you get kind of like this, kind of like sagey green, because gray is added, which means, you know, it's a combination of black and white added to it. And then if you darken it by adding black, you get more of a pine color, that forest green color. Okay, so this is called a monochromatic um, harmony. So, um, greens are very, very kind of like cool to look at. Like, when I get inspiration from nature, I always look at the trees, the plants, and whatnot. For example, this plant right here. Okay, what makes it beautiful and vivid is because it's monochromatic. It has, um, you know, basically different shades of green. Okay? And it's, um, it's beautiful because, you know, you can use different shades of the same color or different tint, tint, tone, or shade, and you can achieve, you know, such an intense look. And when we describe, describe, when we um, transcribe this to makeup artistry, this is the look that you're going to get. And with this look, the model in this picture has used different shades of green, or tints, or tones, and created a look that's just very, very harmonious. All right. Okay, next we're going to talk about um, 
analogous color. So analogous colors are basically colors in a color wheel that are next to each other. Okay, you can use two colors or three colors and they will complement each other very, very nicely as long as they are next to each other on a color wheel. <clears throat> Hard to talk today. So again, we're going to go back to the nature idea and again, some plants pop out and stand out more because they have certain patterns in their leaves that just attracts your eye. For example, this plant right here, which is the agave plant. And agave plant are very, very attractive because it's got three colors in it that are analog analogous. <laughs> and it's very, very harmonious. And um, basically, going back to our color wheel, it has these three colors in it. Green, yellow, green, and yellow. All right? And again, if you, or if we transcribe that to makeup, here's a good example. We're in yellow, yellow, green, and green is used, and it's just very bright and vivid and very complimentary, okay? And that's why, you know, this makeup design is very, very effective. We're going to talk about okay. achromatic colors. Okay. Achromatic colors is basically the absence of colors, so you only work with black and white. Now, as you can see, over here is 100% black and over here is 100% white. Now, the in-betweens are called grays. Okay. Now, depending on the value, um, the higher the value gets, the lighter it is until you reach white. Okay. Now, achromatic colors is also used in makeup. What's the most popular look that this is used for? smoky look, where you get black, and then it fades to gray, and then it, fl it fades to almost dark gray, and then almost like white for the brow bone highlight. So here's a picture of a good example of what achromatic makeup is. Okay, so just to give you an idea on how the color wheel again works, if we're going to put it to purple right here, Okay, the direct complementary is what's going to make it bright and vivid, which is yellow. And here's an example of a beautiful flower called an orchid. And the reason why it looks so pretty, it looks so beautiful, beautiful and just vivid to the eye is because it's directly complementing each color. So the purple is complementing the yellow, and therefore it's making this... Um, flower really, really bright and very, very vivid. Now, we're going to rotate the wheel again, and we're going to go back to our original two colors, red and green. So red complements green, and this is the reason why, when you look at a rose bush or a rose plant, the red roses looks more vivid than the other colors like the pink roses or the yellow roses is because the red color of the flower is complementing the green color of the leaves or the foliage of the bush so or the plant or the tree and um, so there's a reason why red roses are a lot more pleasing to the eye because it's completely and directly complementing the color red directly complements green. So get one of these and you will definitely, you know, have a use for it and you can mix colors and whatnot, you know, try color combination of orange, yellow, orange, and yellow in an eye makeup, just like this one I'm going to show you. And here's another example of a look. And this one, we're going to, I'm just going to turn this wheel, okay. Now this one is, the, uh, the main color is blue, and the split complementary color is kind of like that yellow orange, and kind of like that reddish orange, and this picture of a makeup right here basically shows you that. The reason why it's really pretty, the colors are complementing each other, is because it's a split complementary color in the color wheel. So... Hopefully, this is going to be useful for you guys, and thank you so much for being patient, and um, have a great Happy New Year.